Hello, beloved. Welcome to Sabbath Reconnection, when we spend time worshiping God through stillness, self-care, revelation, and transformation. I'm Pastor Kalisha Statton, founder of In Your Secret Place, and today we're going to spend some time drawing closer to God as we explore Isaiah 61 through 6. May this time that we share together be blessed, refreshing, and enlightening. Before we get started, I always want to give you some aromatherapy support. And this month we are exploring hyssop, which is also known as the holy herb. The essential oils are extracted from the leaves and flowering tops using steam distillation. The aroma has a sweet herby scent with a warm and spicy undertone. It's colorless to about pale yellow green. Contraindicators or cautions that come along with this essential oil is that it can be toxic if too much of it is in your system. So you want to use it in moderation. You want to avoid using it during pregnancy or if you have epilepsy. Some of the emotional benefits of it is that it encourages an awakening, acceptance, and a clarity which can bring balance and harmony to you emotionally and mentally. Spiritually, it's very purifying, it's cleansing, and it enables clarity of the spirit. Now, hyssop has been referenced in the Bible 12 times, most notably as the branch that held the sponge of sour wine offered to Jesus while he was on the cross. These are just a few characteristics of hyssop. If you want to learn more and get more information, you can go to kalishastatin.com, where I will have a more detailed breakdown of the essential oil and how you can use it in your secret place. So now that we have our aromatic support, let's get started with our exhale. As always, we want to find a comfortable space where we're not distracted, where it's quiet, and where you can feel grounded. And we want to sit or lay, whichever one is comfortable for you, in a position that will allow you to just kind of ground yourself as we move into our exhale, relax, and listen. Let's begin with five breaths. As you breathe, focus on the flame of the and try to remove all the stretch that may be around you. And together we're going to inhale. and exhale. Inhale. As you inhale, inhale peace and relaxation. Allowing things to press away from your mind's eye. Exhaling those things that would keep you distracted. More deep breath, inhale.
as we continue to ground ourselves in the serenity. Now take a moment to relax. In this moment, we still breathe together one eternal breath. and end this moment. We breathe in the presence of God. And we breathe out His peace for those around us. The peace that passes all understanding. The peace that can permeate every cell and Peace that helps us to release those things that would keep us bound. As we continue to breathe, as we continue to together, fill your body with this eternal breath of life and be reflection, relax. Pushing out the tension as you exhale. Creating space to inhale the next breath of life. Giving life to your spirit. Giving life to all those places within you that needs to be rejuvenated fresh let it feel let it feel every part of your being and exhale all of those things Makes the tension in the body. And with eyes still closed, breathing the eternal breath of life, listen. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples, but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you all assembled and come to you. Your sons from afar and your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. And when you are ready, I invite you to slowly open your eyes, gently blank them as they readjust to the light, and welcome back. It's time for a spiritual awakening. Did you know that there's a light that resides within you? a holy glow, a divine shine, the light that is God shining within you. Often, it takes us some time to see this light that is within us, to recognize it and embrace it as being part of who we are, an aspect of our makeup and character. Others see it and are drawn to it, 
We don't know why, but they come to us. We're not doing anything extraordinary, yet somehow we stand as this beacon of light, ushering people forward into some sense of safety. Then one day we see it. We see our own light. But even when we see it, we're not always willing to receive it. Some may feel that you're not worthy. You'll say, not yet, Lord. I need to clean up a little bit more. Brush some of this dirt off of me. Some of us just don't want the responsibility that this light may bring. And still others are just afraid. Instead of embracing their light, they turn and walk in the opposite direction, hoping that their light will remain at that turning point. But God is with us and within us, in our low self-esteem, in our blindness, and in our fears. God is there, that ever-present light that shines into our darkness. If you would, for a moment, consider the life cycle of the oak tree. It produces this small nut called an acorn. When we see the seed of the acorn fall to the ground, it doesn't try to be anything other than what it is meant to be. It draws to itself animals and birds who rely on it for survival. It becomes the home or cocoon for other living organisms. But because the acorn was born of the oak tree, it will naturally have characteristics of that oak tree. Therefore, the seed that resides within the shell of the acorn, when given shade and the right atmosphere, begins to take root and grow into a mighty oak tree. And so it is with all of creation. Creation inherently has the characteristics of the creator. And if we truly believe that God dwells within us, then how can we deny this brilliant light that we possess? Are we not an extension of the one who brings forth life, who sits at the gate with the oppressed of the world, who never forgets the forgotten, who sees his creation as good, Yet, we choose to see ourselves as less than, as not enough. Thankfully, God does not see you through your eyes. He sees you through the eyes of the one who created you. He doesn't just see the acorn seed that has fallen to the ground. He sees the mighty oak tree that the seed will produce. When God looks at you, he does not see what you see. He sees what he created you to be. He sees beyond your right now and into your what is to be. God has placed a seed in you that only you can bring forth. Only you can give it the perfect amount of shade, water, and nourishment. But you have to make the decision to be what God created you to be or be what the world created you to be. What purpose has God given you that you have yet to embrace, that you won't even pick up and move forward into, that you're still trying to get yourself together in order to start doing the thing? Do you make room for God to speak and reveal the light and purpose he placed in you? Or are you too busy doing stuff to even be still long enough to invite God to your table? It is possible that all the stuff, church stuff, work stuff, home stuff, your stuff, my stuff, whatever the stuff that we fill our days with is merely a distraction keeping us asleep and our lights dim. But God still speaks. He speaks in every moment of every day. Daily, God speaks and reveals another piece of your purpose. And that's only able to happen when you have finally surrendered yourself to the process of transformation through revelation. 
even if you can't see the whole vision or beyond your own self-imposed limitations, there is purpose in you waiting to be awakened so it can shine. And the process will feel unknown, it will feel unfamiliar and downright uncomfortable. Nevertheless, you have to let go of the presumptions you hold when it comes to being the person you see in order to allow your spirit to wake up and live into the person God created. And although waking up to this unfamiliar view of yourself can be jarring, I encourage you to continue working to exchange all the imperfect characteristics that you see in yourself for God's vision of who you are as his perfect creation. I see my light. I have embraced it and stepped out of my own shadow to be what I was created to be not what the world told me to be, and not even what I think I should be, but what he created me to be. In chapter 60, verse 1, Isaiah issues this challenge to us. He says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. He is calling you forth out of a spiritual slumber to realize that you are called to be a living witness to God's mission in the world, to be a reflection of God's light that is within you. Even though the world is filled with sin, God's light will shine through you. It's time to wake up and shine in this world of darkness, to see your light and have the courage to embrace it, to own it, and to share it. Then you shall see and be radiant. It's time for a spiritual awakening. So that is the time that we have this month. I invite you to go to KalishaStatton.com to learn more about Hyssop and to get other resources that will help you along in your spiritual journey, in your soul care, as well as self-care journey. I will put the links to all of those things below. I thank you for joining me in this space. If this time has been fruitful for you, enlightening, transformative, or just bringing about another awareness, I invite you to give it a thumbs up so that I can continue to grow this ministry in this space. If you haven't already, I also invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the notification button so that you will know when I post a new video. I thank you again for being here and spending this time with me. I am so grateful for your presence. And I look forward to seeing you again in this space. And until then, be blessed.